Hi, Dirty Girl here with another vintage sales report. This is for the month of May 2017, and these are my vintage sales on eBay and Etsy. And I'm going to start with oops, this glass paperweight. Uh, I sold a ton of paperweights this month. I'm just going to show you, by the way, just the highlights. Um, I'm not going to show you every little single pair of earrings I sold, but just the ones that are a little more interesting or a little more lucrative. Um, this is a Mount St. Helens ash um, paperweight, glass paperweight made by Roger Vines in the 1980s. I actually sold two of these. I uh, paid $10 each for them and sold them for $38 a piece. And this is a sterling silver Mexican panel bracelet with an Aztec theme. It was a very heavy bracelet. It weighs, weighed 63 grams. I apologize for the motorcycles outside. Uh, they just don't know how to use mufflers. Um, and I saw one real similar to this on Antiques Roadshow, which was kind of cool. Um, I sold this one for $68, and I got this one free from my sister-in-law, who, one of my sisters-in-law, they frequently give me jewelry to sell. And this I just included because it was so weird. It's a little carved wooden totem pole, a souvenir from Alaska. It was pretty old and um, got it from my mother-in-law so I paid nothing for that and I sold that for $22. I almost didn't mess with it and then I thought oh well might as well just stick a price on it and it sold pretty quickly. And this is a Victorian or Victorian style a sterling silver bangle bracelet with engraving, bright cut engraving. I'm not really sure of the age, so I did say Victorian style um, because there's a lot of revival pieces out there. But it was very pretty. It had some age on it, definitely. And I sold that. I paid $5 for it at the flea market and sold it for $32. And this is a Damascene, Spanish Damascene bracelet, which is that... Um, gold inlaid into steel and this was just such an unusual design it's a real chunky one most of them are very light and delicate but this one was kind of chunky and um, really really nice one that came from my sister-in-law and I sold that for $36 oh and by the way these prices are for the item only um, I always use calculated shipping and so my customers pay close to the actual amount of what it cost me to ship it to them and this is a, a brooch by Catherine Popesco of France. I discovered these brooches by accident. I saw one at the Salvation Army, paid a couple of bucks for it, just because I thought it was pretty. Found out that they sell for a lot. So now if I see one, I snap it up. I snapped this one up at the flea market for $6, and I sold it for $38. I think they were made in the 80s. And this is a piece of nautical hardware. It's a brass C-clamp with this really neat handle on it. A nice little piece of engineering. The brand on it was called La Belle, and I could find absolutely nothing out about this company. Just thought it was really cool. I paid $7.50 for it at the flea market and sold it for $28, and it sold immediately so I might have been able to get more for it I don't know since I didn't know what it was <laughs> this is a big fat cuff bracelet that uh, came from my sister-in-law it's an embossed silver plate bracelet didn't have any marks it was silver over copper but this is a lesson in just because something's not silver doesn't mean it won't sell for good money uh, I sold this for $58, mostly, I think, because it was really beautiful metalwork, and it was big, really big and showy. Um, see how pretty that is? Where is it? On, oh, I, I, I guess it wouldn't fit on my mannequin, so I couldn't show it on her. But anyway, yeah. And then this is another paperweight. This is a seal 
that um, I had to just hunt and hunt and hunt through images until I found out what it was. A rage, I, I'm sure I don't, I'm just butchering this, but rage, mire, glass, hand-blown, made in Sweden. Um, I paid $8 for this at the flea market and sold it for 52 Excuse me while I flip my page, okay. And uh, I always uh, love the Scandinavian silver. Danish or Swedish seems to really do well. This is a, a nicely made piece by Hermann Searsbowl, signed HS. It's a mid-century piece. This came from my sister-in-law, and I sold it for $48. This is an antique pair of pince-nez, pince-nez, pince yeah, right, Karen. Um, anyway, antique glasses. They really weren't in the best shape, but they were very old. Um, they had, the nose cushions were actually made out of cork, um, and then they would have had a little handle right here. But anyway, I paid $5 for those at the flea market and sold them for 42 and this is another paperweight. This one is a whale. Uh, this one still had the Murano glass sticker on it, which is a big selling point. That helps a lot. I paid $7.50 for that at the flea market and sold it for $34. And this is a Vera Newman ladybug scarf from the 1960s. There is a website where you can date your Vera scarves based on the the marking and uh, you know I never wrote down what I sold this for sorry I think it was around 22 24 something like that I don't really remember but I, I just put it in here so that I could let you know that the um, name brand silk scarves do continue to sell they're one of my regular things that I look for and this is a can of teal spun silver bracelet could tell by the clasp that it was a pretty old one. Really cute with the flowers on it. Uh, I misspelled can of teal in the title. <laughs> it's not a good thing. You should spell your words right in your titles. <laughs> people can't find them if you don't spell them right. Although I think when I did the tags, I did have the correct spelling. But anyway, I paid three fifty for that at the flea market and sold it for thirty four. And this is another glass paperweight. This one is signed by. Bruce Friend, I think it is how you say. He's a, a California glass artist. And I paid $11 for that and sold it for 33 And this is, this type of work is called Madeira style. It probably was actually made in Madeira, Spain, but I didn't have any tags or anything to prove that, so I put Madeira style in the title. But it's uh, like kind of a heavy padded embroidery, and it's usually this silver gray color on a cream colored like linen background, and then it's cut out. Um, this was a really large tablecloth. It came from my sister-in-law, who's she's really good at picking out the high quality textiles, and I sold that for eighty-five dollars. And this is another piece from my sister-in-law. She can't resist a good piece of embroidery. This one came from Guatemala. It's a wraparound skirt, like a maxi skirt from the 1970s. And so I paid nothing for that, and that sold for 48 I had a lot of interest and a lot of questions about this skirt, so. And this is a, a Whiting and Davis torque necklace. It's not silver. It's not a precious stone. In fact, I think it's an acrylic stone, but it is kind of a, a graphically ple pleasing thing, and um, I paid two dollars for that at the flea market and sold it for 32. Whiting and Davis is a, a good brand. They're known more for their purses, but they also made a lot of nice jewelry. And this is another Native American ring. This is a Zuni inlaid turquoise and sterling silver piece. I um, continue to sell a lot of 
Native American jewelry, so I just uh, wanted to put this in here as a good example. Paid 15 for this at the flea market and sold it for 42 Just pretty cheap price, really. <laughs> um, and this is something to be on the lookout for. Uh, this is a cup of knowledge fortune-telling cup and saucer with these little cards. It's a design that a lot of different makers made. This one was made in Japan, so I'm sure they just, you know, kind of adopted someone else's design. Uh, but even this one sold for uh, $45. I paid $5 for it at the flea market. If you can find the ones that are made in England, they sell for even more, like $65, $75. And this is a 14 karat gold, little tiny metal. It's called the Photoplay Magazine Metal. came from the 1950s. This is another one of my friend's uh, things that she sort of inherited from uh, her friend's aunt's husband. I don't know how it works. Anyway, uh, he was the screen... No, the film editor for From Here to Eternity, and he won some awards for that, including an Oscar. But he won some Photoplay magazine medals that were 14 karat gold, made by Tiffany and Company. Pretty cool. I sold two of these for 175 each. Fire engine, thank you. Uh, this is a really ornate cast pewter coffee pot. It's Victorian, made by Gerhardy and Company. Uh, Victorian things don't sell the way they used to, but a really good piece will still bring good money. And I uh, paid $10 for this at the flea market and sold it for $74. Okay. Um, this is a little Mexican piggy bank. This came from my mother-in-law, but uh, it's a really nice, rustic, handmade, completely handmade piece, and it's old. You can tell by looking at this. Um, this little slot for the coins was cut out by hand, and there's even the potter's fingerprints in the clay, so it was a really neat piece, and I sold it for $32. And this is a Coro bracelet. Uh, the Coro and Trafari and the like continue to sell pretty well, especially if they're really nice pieces. This is Aurora Borealis rhinestones. It's a really pretty pattern. And um, I got that from one of my sisters-in-law and I sold it for 28. And this is a uh, antique add a pearl necklace. People used to buy these for uh, children and grandchildren. And uh, this one came from my friend, so I paid nothing for it. Dates from the 1920s to 1930s had five pearls on them. I, I don't know whether they're cultured or natural pearls, but they're teeny tiny tiny. Um, and it's on a 14 karat gold chain, but this is extremely small. But it did sell for $95. And uh, figural brooches are still really, really popular. This is Bo Sterling, which is a, a very good brand to look for, and this is the Wise Old Owl. Uh, it's nice. A lot of these pins have official names, and if you can find the official name, it helps because people might be searching for that. So a little Sterling Silver Owl pin that I paid 8 for at the flea market and sold for 28 And this is a carved uh, camphor wood box. You can tell immediately that it's camphor wood because it smells great. Um, it's got a carving of sailboats on it. It's from Hong Kong. I have sold these Hong Kong chests before. They're very distinctive. They come from the mid-century era and earlier. This one uh, I had 1930s question mark. I wasn't really sure. I paid um, $35 for that at the flea market. It is missing the bottom part of the hasp. Uh, but I sold it for $95. Probably would have sold for a little more if it had, the hasp had been complete. Okay, here we have a rhinestone brooch. Um, I don't sell as much rhinestone jewelry as I used to, but there's still room for really pretty pieces. I just love, love, love this brooch. 
And um, let's see, where am I on my list? Oh yeah, okay, so I paid $2 for this one and sold it for 28 And this is an embroidered Mexican dress that my sister-in-law, another motorcycle goes by, uh, that my sister-in-law found for me. She, um, she really finds them. And this one I sold for 45 which is a rather low price for one that's this nice, except that it ha did have a little stain on it, and that affects the value. It wasn't bad. Uh, and this is just, it's a crystal glass bead necklace. It's a really, really long one, so you can loop it around as many times as you want to make it different lengths. Um, I paid $3 for this at the flea market. When I got it home, I realized it had a 14 karat gold clasp, which definitely helps with the price. But also, I think it just sold because it's so pretty. It had kind of an aurora borealis or gold sheen on it. It was just really, really pretty. And uh, that sold for $52. The clasp was little, really little and light, so I don't know that it affected the price that much, but it didn't hurt. And this is an Art Nouveau, really strongly Art Nouveau brooch. It is silver plated. Um, it was sold to me as sterling silver and I paid $15 for it, and I got home, and I tested it, and it was not sterling. It was silver plate. However, uh, was, it was really large, and uh, with that strong of a design, uh, it still sold for, where'd it go? Yeah, I've lost it. Oh, yeah, $38. So, you know, I still made a decent profit on it. And this came from my sister-in-law, and this is something to be on the lookout for. It, it is a Trafari Bird of Paradise enamel brooch, and there were several different styles of this type of brooch, but if you run across one, I think all of them are collectible. This particular one sold for $85. It has like one little rhinestone eye, and then the rest of it is enamel. And then it's pretty big, too. It's, it's, I can show these. There's the size. It's like three inches long. And this mirror, this is just a cast iron mirror with a bird on it. You know, I buy anything with a bird. Um, I think it's probably early 1900s. I searched and searched and didn't find any others like it, so that's usually a good sign that it's not some recently mass-produced thing. But, you know, with no marks, it's hard to tell, but it seemed pretty old. Um... Yeah, so let's see. I paid $15 for this mirror, and I sold it for $45. And this is a Morpho tray, which means it's made out of butterfly wings, which is just a little bit creepy. However, there are rabid collectors of this, and this is a big old tray. Uh, this is This design is all under glass. The the, some of the butterfly wings have this incredible iridescence. Now, unfortunately, this was not in perfect condition. If you look down here around the bottom, there is some damage there, and there's quite a bit of disintegration in this one corner, but it's still pretty cool. Um, I didn't really fully appreciate the extent of the damage when I bought it, and I really paid too much for it. I paid $25 for it. But I was able to sell it for 50 so somebody else appreciated it, and uh, I did have to sit on it for a while, but it sold. And this is the Peter Max poster book. Um, I, this was in my last haul video, I think it was, anyway. Um, I guess we're on to eBay sales. This sold for $58. I was hoping, you know, there would be multiple bidders, but there was just one. And I got that free from my friend. And this is a Hawthorne cocktail strainer. Um, I think I told this story some 
on some video recently, so I apologize if you've heard it before. You might hear it again if I haven't posted the video yet. But um, I paid $3 for this at the flea market, and I mostly bought it because it had this on it. Manning Bowman Company patent, October 11th, 1892. I love stuff that has dates and patents and stuff like that. And I just thought it was kind of cool, and it was only $3. And I found out that it's really rare, well, somewhat rare. Um, they only made a few of them with this particular marking on it, and then the patent was assigned to the bar owner for whom this was designed, which was the Hawthorne Bar, and the man's name was Sullivan, so later ones have the name Sullivan on them. So I just happened to stumble across the information about this, and I got $99, as you can see. And then last is this gigantic C-clasp, C-clamp. Um, when I can find industrial-looking stuff, big tools, big pulleys and block and tackles and, you know, gigantic tools seem to sell really well. And sometimes, you know, not everybody likes them and they don't always, they aren't very expensive. This, I believe I paid $3 for this at an estate sale and I sold it for 35 So that is it. Those are my most notable sales for May. Thanks for sticking with me. And, um, I appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And I will be back soon with another haul video. Thanks. Bye.